Hi there, welcome to highschoolmaths.co.uk. Today we're going to be looking at how to find the volume of some basic three-dimensional three shapes and then some composite shapes or compound shapes. So we're going to start off nice and simple with the volume of a cuboid. Nice straightforward uh, formula for this. It's just basically the three-dimensional version of finding the area of a rectangle. So the volume, V, is equal to the length times the breadth times the height, so LBH. So V equals... In this case, it's 8 times 4 times 5. And then this one could quite easily come up in a long calculator. So 4 times 5 is 20. Times that by 8 is 160. Now your units for volume, because it's three-dimensional, are cubic centimetres. So cm cubed. Okay. So that's how you find the volume of a cuboid. Let's have a look at another shape. Volume of a cylinder. So a little bit trickier, this one. Uh, so volume of a cylinder is given by the formula V equals pi r squared h. Now a cylinder is kind of the three-dimensional version of a circle. That's why it's got this pi r squared. Remember, area of a circle is pi r squared. So volume of this whole shape, this kind of space inside this whole shape here, is pi r squared times the height. So V equals pi r squared h. Pi times, now the radius is from the middle of the circle to the outside, so that's 5 squared in this case, times the height, which is 13. Remember, sometimes instead of giving you the radius, it might give you the diameter, so watch out for that. Type it into your calculator using the pi button, if you've got one, to get a nice accurate answer. And it should give you 1021.0, and we'll just do it to two decimal places, 02 cm cubed cubic centimetres. Okay, so very similar work into what we had for the volume of a cuboid on a cube, but obviously a different formula. Okay, let's have a look at the next page. So volume of a cone. And a cone is actually, it looks a lot more complicated, but it's not too bad. It's basically just the volume of a cylinder, but it's a third of the size. So it's a third pi r squared h. So we type our, uh, write our formula down first, v equals a third pi r squared h. That's a third times pi times the radius, and this is, what have, <coughs> this is where you have to be careful. Remember the bottom part is your circle, so when we're looking for the radius, we're looking for the distance from the middle to the outside here, which would be 3 for a radius, squared, don't forget your squared, times the height, which is 10. Okay, and again, we're just typing that into the calculator. Now, when you type that into the calculator, there's various different ways to do it. If you're not sure, just do 1 divided by 3, which is a third, times the pi button, times 3 squared, times 10. And that will give you 94.25. And again, we'll just stick to two decimal places. You could round differently. And you might have to use significant figures depending on the question. CM cubed. Okay. So... Last one we're going to look at before we move on to composite shapes is the volume of a sphere. So we're going to look here at the volume of this kind of three-dimensional sphere. I've tried to get the best diagram I could. Um, it's a three-dimensional shape, kind of like football. So it's four-thirds pi r cubed is our formula. So it's four-thirds times pi times the radius, so again from the middle of the circle, or the sphere, to the outside, so that would be 7 in this case. Just be careful if it gives you the diameter, remember half it. And typing this into the calculator, you're doing 4 divided by 3 times pi times 7 cubed. That should give you 1436.76 if we round it to two decimal places again, cm cubed. Okay, so those are your basic shapes. We're going to go on, go on now and look a little bit at prisms and composite shapes. So, um, composite shapes are shapes that are just joined together. So we've got two basic shapes that we had, two or more basic shapes that we had or have seen already, but they're joined together in some way. So here you can see you've got a cone on the top and a hemisphere or a half sphere on the bottom. So we're going to have two shapes we're going to have to calculate the volume of. So I'm going to label them 1 and 2. So shape 1, we're doing V equals a third, 
Remember, each shape has its unique formula, so the, the cone is a third pi r squared h. So it's a third times pi times, now the radius of this cone, this is what we're focusing on, is from here to here, okay, which wouldn't be 70, it would be 35. So times 35 squared times the height of the cone, which is 80. Okay, so it's 1 divided by 3 times pi times 35 squared times 80, and that gives you 102, 625.36 cubic centimetres. Okay, so that's the first part. Second part was the volume of the hemisphere. Now, it's up to you which way you want to do this. It is half a sphere, so we're still thinking of the, the volume of a sphere formula which is 4 thirds pi r cubed, which we saw on the last page. But it's only a half sphere, so we've got to take half of that value. Now, I would just normally put the half in here. So you can either multiply it by half or divide by 2. So I'm going to multiply by a half at this stage because it's only a half sphere. And that way we don't have to worry about it for the rest. We just type it into the calculator and we're done. So 4 thirds times pi times the radius of the sphere, or the hemisphere, which again is this distance here, so that would be 35 cubed, be careful with your powers, times the half because it's a half sphere. So type it in, 4 divided by 3 times pi times 35 cubed times a half 0 0.5 and we get 89,797.19 and again cm cubed. Okay, so for this shape, the final step would be to find the total. Okay, so the total would just be these two numbers added together. So 102.625.36 plus our previous answer, which I've still got in the calculator, it saves me a little bit of typing. So I'm just going to take my answer that I had, 102.625.36, and add that onto the previous answer given me, 19. Two four two two point five five cubic centimeters. Okay, and that's all you have to do for composite shapes. If there was three shapes joined together, you would find the volume of each individual shape and add all three together at the end. Okay, so what happens if you've got something like this? So what we've got here is a cylinder that's had a, a, a kind of tube shape, so a cylinder that has another cylinder cut out from the middle. Okay, I'll try to show that as best as I can. Again, my artwork's not perfect, but hopefully you can see you've got this kind of outside cylinder that's white, and then inside you've got the kind of tube that's been cut out through the middle. Okay, almost like a, a kind of roll of kitchen roll. Um, so here we've got again two shapes. We've got the outer cylinder, the bigger one, and we've got the inner one, the smaller cylinder. Okay, they are both cylinders. So for shape one, we're doing V equals pi r squared h. So it's pi times, now the radius, we're doing the big one first, so we're looking at this bigger circle on the outside, that's the 24 diameter, which means the radius would be from the middle to the outside, which would be 12. So times 12 squared times the height, now this is how far back the cylinder would be, uh, or how far it would stand if it was standing up. Now watch out for this, units have got to be consistent, okay? You'll notice these are centimetres, we can't use a mixture of centimetres and metres, it will give us an inconsistent answer. Okay, so 2 metres is 200 centimetres. 100 centimetres in every metre. So times 200 at the end here. Okay, so it's pi times 12 squared times 200. For the first part, that's 90,477.87. Again, we're just sticking with two decimal places just now. Shape 2 is that again a cylinder, so V equals pi r squared h, so it's pi times. Now we're looking at the smaller circle here for the inside cylinder, so the radius of that would only be from there to there, which is 10 squared, but the height, or how far back the circle goes, is going to be 200 still. So V equals pi times 10 squared, again to type into your calculator, times 200. And that gives you 62,831.
0.85 cm cubed. Okay, and this time, because you've got a shape cut out of another shape, when you want to find the kind of resultant volume, you're going to actually take away. Okay, so the volume of that kind of white tube shape there is going to be the bigger one, 90,477.87, take away the smaller one. Okay, so we're going to do 90,477.87 minus the previous answer, and that's going to give us 27,646.02 cm cubed, or cubic centimeters. Okay, and that's our resultant volume for the white part of that shape. Okay, so next I'm going to look at is finding the volume of a prism. And quite an easy process as long as you are kind of aware of how prisms work. Now we've actually already looked at a few prisms with the cuboid and the cylinder. So a prism is a shape that has the same kind of cross section. So this kind of front face is a pentagon, a regular pentagon, repeating all the way through. It doesn't, the shape doesn't get smaller, it doesn't taper in, and it doesn't get wider. Um, it just stays the same kind of sh size all throughout. So the volume of any prism is the area of the cross section, so the area of this front face times the length of the shape, or how far back that cross section goes. So volume here would be 30 times 6, nice and easy, which is 180 cm cubed. Okay, you notice that the gate, we, we already had the area of the front section, so it's just the area of that times the length of the shape. Okay, so nice easy formula, prisms are nice and straightforward. However, you're not always going to be given the area. So if we look at something like this, which is going to be our final shape today, this is a prism. You've kind of almost got this house on its side or arrow kind of shape here. It's not a shape we recognize. Okay, I don't recognize this front shape. We're not told the area of the front section, so we don't know what this is. Instead, what we're going to look to do is we're going to look to split it up into shapes that we do recognize. Okay, they are going to be prisms because the shape stays the same, kind of, it's the same cross section all the way through. But what we're going to do is if we split it down here, like that, then you can now hopefully see that that is a cuboid or a rectangular prism and a triangular prism here. Okay, and from that we can just use what we know about prisms to find the volume of each shape individually. So we'll do one and two, just like we did with the composite shapes, and then add them together. So shape one is a cuboid, so it's length times the breadth times the height, LBH. So it's length, sorry, length of the cuboid. So here, if we look at the cuboid, we're just focusing on this section here, okay? The length of the cuboid would be 12, be careful you don't pick the 15. The 15 is for the whole shape, okay? The length of the cuboid part is 12. So it's 12 times the breadth of the cuboid, which is 10, times how far back it goes, or the height of the cuboid, eight. Okay, and we're taking that from this section down here. So that part would be eight. So 12 times 10 times eight. So that should give you 960 cm cubed for that cuboid section. Okay, that's our first part. The triangular prism. Now we've not covered this explicitly yet, but we know that the area of a triangle is a half times the length times the breadth. So the volume would be a half times the length times the breadth times the height. Again, it's very similar to the relationship between area of a rectangle and area of a triangle. So if the volume here of the cuboid was LBH, the volume of a triangle is a half LBH. So it's a half times, so the length, again, just as long as you pick the correct dimensions, this is what you have to focus on. So I'd say length here, I'm going to tilt my head and look at this as being the length of the triangle, which is the 10. The breadth, I'm going to call this distance here. Now here, from here to here, it's not 15. It's that distance between that part and the end, okay? So this part was 12, this part is 15, 
we're looking for the difference. So 12 add 3 gives us 15, so it's 3. Or 15 take away 12. And the height of the shape is still the same. It's been pushed a depth of 8 centimetres. So V equals half times 10 times 3 times 8. And that would give us half of 10 is 5. 5 times 3 is 15. And 15 times 8 is 120 cm cubed. Okay, so we've got two individual volumes. Again, the total here is just going to be these two added together. So 960 plus 120. And that would be 1080 cubic centimetres for a final answer. Okay, so that gives you a quick kind of show of how you calculate the volume of some basic shapes. They can be used in a variety of different ways and lots of different scenarios. So take your formula. The key step is recognise your shapes. So look to see what shapes you have. Use the correct formula and pop the numbers in. Every volume question will start that way. There may be a bit, little bits extra at the end, but every volume question will start that way. Okay, so hopefully you found that helpful. For our maths videos and resources, please visit www.highschoolmaths.co.uk. If you did like the video, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe, and please share this video. Thanks for watching, and have a mathematical day.